Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Kyle with the Bricto Security. We're continuing on the Hack the Box starting point series with the Responder Box. Let's get going. All right, so I already got a box up and running here. I'm gonna grab our IP address and hop right into Cali. I'm gonna do a sudo nmap. I'm gonna put in our IP address, do a dash SV so we can look for all version numbers. I'm gonna extend out our port search by doing a dash P dash to look for every single port that might be open and then do a, da a dash dash min dash rate equals a thousand just so we can get our search speed a little bit quicker. There we go, all right. <laughs> I'm gonna let nmap run, I'll be back in a second. All right, so it looks like we have uh, three ports open here. Uh, we have port 80, 595, and 7680. Uh, port 80 is going to be your standard HTTP web page. Uh, and port 5985 is actually the default port for WinRM. All WinRM is is a management service uh, that allows for uh, automation using uh, scripts or whoever the manager may be. Um, these are typically employed on different web servers. So what I'm going to do first here is take a look at this web page and see what is on it. I'm going to open up Firefox here and put in our IP address, press enter. So what looks like happened here is we don't actually have a name base host to search on from our IP address, but it does give us the unica.htv or hack the box. So more than likely what's happening here is that our web server is actually using name base virtual hosting to host multiple different host names on its IP address. This is just a method that allows for multiple hosts to be able to use the same server. And the best reason to do this is so they can all share uh, resources if uh, it's not necessarily something that's overly demanding or they want to lower their costs. So what the web server is doing is actually checking the domain name header. And so what we can do is put this into a file that will resolve a specific domain based upon an IP address that we entered. So every time we put in that IP address, it's going to default route to whatever that DNS host name is going to be set as. So what I'm going to do next here is go back into our terminal and I'm going to set uh, this host IP with a specific domain name. So I'm going to do uh, echo and apostrophe. I'm going to put in our IP address and then I'm going to do whatever uh, the host name is going to be. So looking at our Firefox here, it looks like we have unica.hackthebox. So I'm gonna copy that over and close off. Now I'm gonna pipe this and do a sudo t and then dash a. And what t is going to be doing is actually writing to a file and the a flag is what's going to append to the end of the file. So we're not actually removing the entire file itself, all the contents within that, but just appending and adding whatever extra information we are putting to the end of that file this being the echo that we're first doing in the first pipe. So the file that I'm going to actually write to is going to be slash Etsy slash hosts. And I'm going to press enter on that. It's going to echo that out just right underneath it, but it's also going to pin to that file. If I were to do something like a tail, and then slash Etsy slash hosts, We can see right there at the end of our file, we have the 10.129.179.141 is going to echo out our name right here being unica.hackthebox. So now let me go ahead and grab that IP again. I'm going to copy that over. Let's go back into Firefox. So now when I put that IP into our web address and press enter, it's going to remember to go to that host name, the virtual host name of unica.hackthebox. And here's our webpage right here. It's no longer trying to uh, do a DNS query as to what uh, IP address is being used on the host web server. So now that we're on this address here, let's take a look around and see what could be available for us to possibly exploit. Uh, we can't actually download a PDF right now. It has specific services. There is a contact us uh, that might lead us somewhere. Uh, we have a whole bunch of Web applications, good sponsors, buy a car. Here is our contact us page. There may be some kind of exploitation here on the contact us that we might be able to do. Um, but nothing super exciting here. Uh, I do see we have a language change here. Why don't we go ahead and look at that? Oh, 
and look what we have right here up at the top. What we are looking at here is actually a parameter that's being set for us on the URL with the page equals. Uh, it is asking to look for a specific file of french.html. Well, what we can possibly look to execute here would be something called local file inclusion. Dynamic web pages will use things like HTML pages to fetch and actually provide some of the information that is going within the web page. So you don't have to have it all written into the source code itself. So what we're going to do next is try to get that parameter to search for a file that should not necessarily be available to us as just an external user to the web server. Now we can start manually going through this. If I go into the web page and I look for something like dot dot slash, and let's see if it starts going back. It failed opening for anything specific because it couldn't actually find what that was in the specific path. So why don't we keep going? Let's go back another directory. And nothing yet, but you know, this will be a longer process where we just go one by one and looks like we're on line 11. Still nothing of interest. Now I've already done the enumeration for you here, so I'm not gonna make you have to go through this each page one by one in order to find the file, but I'm going to copy this over and I'm gonna paste that in. And all we did was unique at a hacked box, same thing we were looking for, add the page parameter and go back several directories until we get to the main system, go into Windows, System32, Drivers, etc., and Host. And as you can see, it's actually loaded a file on the web server that should not be available to us because all of this information is going to be specific to whoever is managing this web server. And the reason that this is actually possible is because somewhere within the coding on the back end is there's a method that is actually allowing us to call for these specific files. If there's no any kind of input validation or any kind of WAF uh, in between us and the web server, then the local file inclusion or remote file inclusion might be possible for us, such as it is in this case. And there's also something called remote file inclusion. And the only difference between local and remote is instead of looking for a specific file that is on the machine, or on the server, we're gonna to try to upload whatever our own payload, being HTML or PHP or whatever that may be, onto the system. So knowing that we have access to this file, what we can try to get to do now is have this machine request from a shared folder, assuming that the web server is calling for the shared folder, and we might be able to actually capture that specific machine user's hash. And the kind of hash that we're gonna be looking for is something that's gonna be just as useful to us as what a password would be. The hash that we're gonna look for right now is going to be called an NTLM hash, or New Technology Land Manager. What that NTLM hash is gonna allow us to do is have access as a specific user to request things in the same method that a password would do. What Windows is going to try to do is authenticate to us with either a password or with a hash that is corresponding with that set password. So we're gonna to try to capture that now with something called Responder. So if I look up Responder-H, it's gonna give us the help as to what Responder can actually do for us. And what Responder is, is just going to be a poisoner of these three things, being NBT-NS, LLMNR, and MDNS. Now I'm not going into full detail as to what each of these are, but just know that these are network resolutions that are allowing machines to communicate with one another. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do here is, is actually set up our Responder file, and that is located in, uh, uh, Etsy, responder, and then responder.com. And what I'm gonna look to do here is turn on every single one of these services. So we're gonna start with SMB. We're gonna turn that on. Let me scroll down here in HTTP, and we're gonna make sure that is turned on as well. I press B. Let's try on, that looks a lot better. I'm gonna also turn on uh, DNS. And now that we have everything on, we can press escape, put it in our colon, and WQ to save. And it looks like I didn't go into sudo, so I pressed estate, escape, Q, and exclamation point. Let's run this again. I'm gonna give you a little quick command here. If you do sudo and then two exclamation points, it will actually call back to whatever your previous command was. So we're gonna run that again, press enter, 
All right, now let me go in and turn all this on. Press escape, colon, WQ, and we got that saved. Okay, now that we've set up our responder configuration file, we're gonna launch this listening for our specific network traffic. So I'm gonna do sudo responder dash I, and then do ton zero. Man, I can't type today, ton zero. And all ton zero is, is our network that is listening to Hack the Box. Because remember, we're connecting via a VPN in order to communicate with Hack the Box. So I'm going to get that going and press enter. Now, if you see an error here that it's a specific port isn't necessarily open, as long as you don't have anything like Responder running in the background, this port is unavailable to us because we have a VPN that's open and using that port specifically to communicate back to Hack the Box. So the next thing that we're going to do here is actually a really cool part. So we're going to open up this web page again. I'm going to do HTTP colon slash slash unica dot hack the box. And remember, uh, our request page was on slash question mark. We have to give it our parameter, which was the page equals. And whatever we put after this is what we're going to request for. So I'm going to request back to our tunnel. So I'm going to do slash slash. Let me go back. Let me look up what our tunnel IP address is. If I do ifconfig and grab our tunnel VPN address right here, copy that over. I'm gonna put that into our web address. So now the URL is gonna look back onto our network device to see if it can reach us. Now I'm gonna put slash and then we can put anything we want here as long as it's trying to request some file out of us. So I'm just gonna put some file and press enter. Let's go back into our terminal. I'm gonna go into our other tab. We can see that we're actually actively poisoning the network right now. So all this is going to do is search on the LLMNR traffic. And there we go, right there at the end, Responder was actually able to capture the administrator and its hash right here at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is actually copy that hash. It does save to a file, but I'm just going to grab it myself. I'm gonna type in echo, put in our quotation, paste that in, and then I'm gonna output that to a file, and I'm just gonna call this file hash.txt. Press enter on that. All right, so now that we've captured this hash, the next step we're gonna be doing is trying to crack this hash. And because it's an NTLN v2 hash, it's going to be a little bit easier than something like a Kerberos ticket or a DCC2 hash. That's something we're probably going to get in the future. But let's just stick to this right now. So what we're going to use in order to crack this is going to be something called John the Ripper. Now John comes already pre-installed on the Kali, so I'm just going to type in John. And now we need to specify our word list. So I'm going to do dash W. I need to make it equals. I'm going to put a space initially and go back and edit it just so it'll auto complete for me. And that's going to be in user, share, word list. You can use any word list that you would like here, but I'm just gonna do something basic with like the rock you. Rock you.txt. I'm gonna go back and back up that space. And then we need to specify what our hash uh, file is. So hash.txt, press enter, and boom, right there. There it is, our account, and there's our password right there being badminton. How awesome is that? So now we know from our in-map scan that WinRM is available. Now we can't actually have direct access into that because we don't have PowerShell on Linux specifically, but we can use a tool called evil WinRM. If I just look up evil-winRM and then dash dash help, it's gonna tell us everything about evil WinRM and what our actual usage is going to be. And the goal of evil WinRM is to get us a shell that is supported on the machine. So I'm gonna type in evil-winrm, and we need to grab our IP address. So I'm gonna go grab that real quick. And then I'm gonna go back in, do a dash capital I, put in our IP address, space, and now we need to specify who our user is going to be. So we know it was dash u, and it was administrator. And then whatever his password was with the dash p, and that was badminton. Press enter on that. Made a mistake on my end, it was a lowercase i. Syntax is important. And there we are, there's our shell onto the web server. So from here, we just need to go find whatever the flag may be. Uh, type, sorry, there's a Windows machine, so LS doesn't work. Let's type dir, 
and we see nothing actually within the documents. So let's go searching on another user. So let's do cd dot dot. Let's go back. Let's go back another file directory. Let's do ls. We see that we have Mike available to us as well as the administrator. So let's cd into Mike right now. And ls see what is on his machine. We have desktop. Cd into desktop. And there is our flag. Let's cut out our flag. And that is our answer for hack the box. So let's go back in and answer these hack the box questions. When visiting the web service using the IP address, what is the domain that we are being redirected to? That was unica.hackthebox. Which scripting language is being used on the web server to generate web pages? That was PHP. What is the name of the URL parameter which is used to load different language versions on the web page? Uh, that's just a page. And we remember that if we looked at the parameter in the URL, which was page equals. Which of the following values for the page parameter would be an example of exploiting a local file include or LFI vulnerability? Uh, it gives us some options to choose from here but it was the dot dot slash all the way out into the system 32 drivers and hosts. Which of the following values for the page parameter would be an example of exploiting a remote file inclusion vulnerability? Remote file inclusion is what we're using with responder when we are searching for a different share on our, on the web address with some specific file name. What does NTLM stand for? That is New Technology LAN Manager. Which flag do we use in the responder utility to specify the network interface? That was dash capital I. There are several tools that take a net NTLM v2 challenge slash response and try millions of passwords to see if any of them generate the same response. One such tool is often referred to as John, but the full name is what? That is John the Ripper. What is the password for the administrator user? That was Badman. We'll use a Windows service, i.e. running on the box, to remotely access the responder machine using the password we recovered, what port TCP does it listen on? The default port for that for WinRM was 5985. And we need to finally submit our root flag. So let's go back in and grab that. And paste that in. And we have completed the responder box.